This video is brought to you by Captivating History. In the ancient world, before the Abrahamic religions became the most practiced belief systems worldwide, most societies were polytheistic, meaning they have more than one central god. The Romans were no different. Their gods were not like Yahweh or Allah. They were not omnipotent and all-seeing. The people of Rome worshipped multiple deities, all of whom had complex personalities with their fair share of strengths and flaws. As the Romans expanded throughout the Mediterranean and beyond, they would incorporate foreign gods and goddesses, especially Greek ones, into their beliefs. One might be tempted to ask, how could they keep track of this ever-increasing collection of gods? It's a fair question. The Romans did not have a strict set of rules or credos when it came to faith. Their beliefs were polythetic, overlapping and contradictory, because instead of stigmatizing dogmas and enabling a systemic orthodoxy, they ascribed to orthopraxy, emphasizing rituals instead of beliefs. The Greeks had a significant influence on the development of Roman mythology, as the Romans developed many deities as alternatives to their respective Greek counterparts. It was not until the revelations of Socrates in ethics that these gods were undermined by rationale. Despite having hundreds of gods and goddesses with hundreds of different interpretations, there were 12 major gods and goddesses in the Roman pantheon, called the De Consentes. This was a group of six gods and six goddesses, and these deities held more sway over the lives of the Romans than any other deities. The famed Roman historian Livy categorizes them in six male-female pairs. Jupiter Juno, Neptune Minerva, Mars Venus, Apollo Diana, Vulcan Vesta, and Mercury series. The statues of De Consentes stood in the Roman Forum, known in Latin as Forum Romano, which was located in the heart of the city. Of these twelve, Jupiter, Juno, and Minerva formed the Capitoline Triad as the three guides who held the central and foremost role in Roman society. So let's take a look at the Roman gods and goddesses that held sway over the spiritual and social lives of the Romans. Jupiter. Jupiter, also known as Jove, was the Roman equivalent of the Greek god Zeus. He was the god of thunder and lightning, god of the sky, and the king of the gods who ruled over Mount Olympus. He held thunderbolts in both hands, and his primary sacred animal was the eagle. Due to his might and fierce courage, the Roman military held him in high esteem, and the eagle became the most common symbol of the Roman army. Considering him the supreme authority in law and order, they thought of him as the protector of the state. After a victory in battle, the military commanders and soldiers would go and pay tribute to Jupiter in his temple. In Plutarch's second set of biographical works, Parallel Lives, when talking about the founder of Rome, Romulus, he writes, But being overborne with numbers, and nobody daring to face about, stretching out his hand to heaven, Romulus prayed to Jupiter to stop the army and not to neglect but maintain the Roman cause, now in extreme danger. The prayer was no sooner made than shame and respect for their king checked many. The fears of the fugitives changed suddenly into confidence. The mighty god was known for his promiscuity with various mortal and immortal women, and had many children with them. Jupiter was the son of Saturn and Opus, and he had multiple siblings, all of whom were great gods and goddesses in their own right. Juno, Ceres, Vesta, Neptune, and Pluto. After the death of Saturn, the three sons, Jupiter, Neptune, and Pluto, divided the world among themselves, and Jupiter claimed the heavens. Juno Juno, the Roman equivalent of the Greek goddess Hera, was the goddess of marriage, childbirth, kings, and the Roman Empire. She was a powerful symbol of womanhood. Like her Greek counterpart, she kept an eye on the affairs of the female population, as a member of the Capitoline Triad, she was considered the queen of the gods. Her primary symbol was the peacock, exemplified by her chariot that was pulled by peacocks instead of horses. The Greek goddess Hera often seems calm, resolved, and collected in her sculptural depictions, but her attire gives her away. Often seen wearing a goatskin cloak, she sought out war and vengeance against the other halves of Zeus's affairs and wreaked havoc on them and their children. Juno, however, was the personification of vital force and eternal youth, and as such, she was graceful, nurturing, and kind. This distinction can be attributed to differences in Greek and Roman societies. 
women were a far more integral part of Roman societies as compared to Greek societies. Minerva Minerva, the Roman equivalent of the Greek goddess Athena, was the virgin goddess of wisdom, music, poetry, medicine, commerce, weaving, and defensive warfare. Her understanding of crafts and her knowledge of tactics led to strategic planning in the course of wars. As the sponsor of arts, handicrafts, trade, and industry, her symbol was the owl, epitomizing her connection with knowledge and wisdom. Her shrine on the Aventine in Rome served as a meeting place for dramatic poets, actors, and guilds of artisans. After Jupiter had laid with Metis, he became increasingly paranoid about the prophecy that her children would be extremely powerful. After tricking her into turning herself into a fly, he swallowed her, but Metis was already pregnant, so Minerva burst forth from Jupiter's forehead, carrying a spear, a shield, and clad in armor that her mother had made her. Whereas Minerva facilitated defensive warfare, Mars was a proponent of violence. Mars Mars, the god of war and an agricultural guardian, was the Roman equivalent of the Greek god Ares. As the most prominent military god of Rome, Mars was quite different from his progenitor. Since Ares felt the urge to quench his thirst for violence and satiate his taste for war, the Greeks viewed him as a contemptuous and revulsive nuisance. Before coming into contact with the Roman world, the Greek world was the epitome of arts, culture, and sophistication, and they had amassed their wealth through trade. This was in stark contrast to the Romans, who had followed a policy of military expansion. In Roman culture, Mars was a figure who symbolized security, courage, and assuredness. They portrayed him as a complex figure as opposed to the offensive brood of the Greeks. Mars was Minerva's half-brother and the son of Jupiter and Juno, and he was the father of Romulus and Remus in the Roman tradition. His union with Venus served as an intriguing subject for poets, philosophers, and artists. Venus Venus, the goddess of love, sex, and beauty, known mostly through that immortal work of Renaissance art by Botticelli, The Birth of Venus, was the Roman counterpart of the Greek goddess Aphrodite. Venus is perhaps the most frequently referenced figure of the Greco-Roman mythology, and she is often depicted nude as an expression and manifestation of female grace and beauty. In Greek mythology, Ares and Aphrodite, the equivalents of Mars and Venus respectively, are condemned and condescended for their adulterous relations. The Romans ignored the turbulent relationship of the god and goddess, and in perfect romantic fashion, later art fetishized their courtship. The dynamic of the relationship has been the subject of conversation for years, as the seductive goddess tempers the violence of Mars. Marsilio Ficini, the Renaissance philosopher, notes, Only Venus dominates Mars, and he never dominates her. Vulcan Vulcan, the husband of Venus, was the god of fire, metalworking, blacksmith, forging, and volcanoes and deserts. He was the Roman equivalent of the Greek god Hephaestus. His most celebrated pastime regarding his craft was to forge weapons. He is often portrayed with his blacksmith's hammer. He was the son of Jupiter and Juno, and he was a small and ugly baby. His mother rejected him and hurled him from the top of Mount Olympus, landing him in the sea where he was cared for by a sea nymph. He would meet his parents later in life under unfortunate circumstances, and they would grant him Venus as part of the deal. Neptune The brother of Jupiter, Neptune, was the god of freshwater springs and the sea. He was the counterpart of the Greek god Poseidon. The Romans also worshipped him as a ruler of horses and horse racing. As a patron of horse racing, he was also known as Neptunus Equester. There are very minor differences between Poseidon and Neptune. The two can often be seen yielding their iconic symbol, the trident with which they control the waves and riding a chariot pulled by horses and sometimes dolphins. Tempests, large storms, and rough waves were signs of Neptune's fury. He was considered to be a very good-looking god, and he was the brother of Jupiter, Pluto, Juno, Ceres, and Vesta. Apollo Apollo is the only god in classic Greco-Roman mythology who remains unchanged in his journey from the Greek canon to the Roman tradition. He was the god of archery, as well as music and dance, sickness and healing, and truth and prophecy. The symbols of the Greco-Roman god are the sun, a bow and arrow, a laurel wreath, a swan, and a lyre. He was the patron deity of Delphi, 
where the famous oracle of Delphi resided and called to him. The cult devoted to Apollo was known as the Cult of Delphi. As an averter of evil, he was the savior of people who were foreign to the cities, like seafarers, merchants, and foreign travelers. Naturally, he was fond of nature and loved music, dance, songs, and poetry. With such an appetite for a simple and pastoral life, he was also the patron of shepherds and herdsmen and the protector of flocks and crops. In the Roman tradition, he could be both the harbinger of pestilence and the talisman of healing. He was the son of Jupiter and a mortal woman. Apollo was a gentle god who was sensitive to the plight of the mortal man, and he was the twin brother of Diana. Diana Diana, the twin sister of Apollo and the Roman equivalent of the Greek goddess Artemis, was the goddess of the hunt, wild animals, childbirth, and she was the patroness of hunters, the countryside, and the moon. Like her brother, she carries a bow and a quiver. Her other symbols include hunting dogs, deer, and the crescent moon. Diana was a virgin goddess, and she made up a triad of two other deities, Verbius, the woodland god who was the Roman counterpart of Hippolytus of Athens, and Egeria, the water nymph who was her subordinate and assistant midwife. One of the greatest masters of the High Renaissance, Titian, depicts the scene where the hunter lays his eyes on Diana and her nymphs in one of his revered works, aptly titled Diana and Actaeon. Diana is famous for her interaction with a young hunter named Actaeon. When the hunter happened upon Diana, who was nude and enjoying a bath with her nymph escorts, she splashed water on him and turned him into a deer. The hunter's dogs, failing to recognize their master, tore him to pieces. Later on, Titian also painted the scene of Actaeon's demise, called the Death of Actaeon. Ovid, the great Roman poet, recounts this tale in his magnum opus, Metamorphoses. Mercury Mercury, the god of finance, commerce, eloquence, communication, messages, boundaries, travelers, luck, and thievery, was the Roman equivalent of the Greek god Hermes. He is famously recognizable by his winged sandals. He also wears a cap and carries a staff with two intertwined snakes known as a caduceus in his left hand. The staff was a gift from Apollo. Mercury is often seen with a tortoise as well, symbolizing his invention of a lyre from a tortoise shell. Mercury was probably among the most popular gods of the Romans. Considering he was the patron of shopkeepers, merchants, thieves, and travelers, it's not hard to see why. He also served as a guide for the dead in the underworld. Mercury was the son of Jupiter and Maya, a mountain nymph. The Hellenization of the Latin world exerted a considerable impact on every facet of Roman life. The expansionist policy of the Roman Empire saw them incorporate multiple cultures. For instance, Mercury has several similarities with the Greek god Hermes, but actually originates from both Etruscan and Greek mythology. Gods like Janus and Tiberius were not lifted from the Greek pantheon, with the latter being the god of the river Tiber. The inclusion of diverse ideas made ancient Rome what it was, and their gods and goddesses with their divine flair and human follies are apt reminders of that. We hope you enjoyed this video on Top 10 Roman Gods and Goddesses. If you did, please hit the like button and subscribe for more videos like this. Also, grab your free Mythology Bundle ebook while it's still available. The link is in the description.